our scripture lesson this morning is Psalm 145, but I'm reading it according to a paraphrase, a very old paraphrase, I believe from the 1970s, written by Leslie F. F. Brandt in his book, Psalms Now. God is here. Let's celebrate. Let us enlist our lives in perpetual celebration over God's goodness and greatness. Let us announce to the world God's presence and proclaim God's loving concern for all humanity. How compassionate God is for all creation. How tender toward failure fraught creatures. God's blessings are not reserved only for those who fit obediently into God's design for them. God is just. God is forgiving. God gently picks up those who have fallen and restores them to relationship and servanthood. God sustains those who are wavering in weakness and grants them grace and strength. God reaches into the void of empty lives and enriches and fulfills hungry hearts. God is enough to hear our every cry, to sense our every need, to grant whatever is necessary to make us happy and productive as we seek to follow and serve God. How incom incomparably glorious is our great God. May our mouths articulate and our lives demonstrate God's ever-present love for all creation. Let us celebrate the eternal mercy and goodness of our God. Here ends our reading. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear God, will you please help us to set our voices free? Set us free to celebrate you and to honor your goodness out loud. And somehow, O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, you think I should preach with a megaphone this morning? <laughs> now, the kids, they kind of liked being heard, right? Did you hear that? Anybody out there like to feel like you're being seen? You, wanna, you want somebody to know that you did a good job? Honesty. Where is it? Well, maybe if you're shy, you don't want to be noticed. There are those of us who don't like to be noticed. But I believe that God wants our lives to be heard. And really and truly, we need to hear each other's lives. Most of you know that one of the things I love to do is I love to put together a eulogy after someone has died. I love sitting in the room with family and friends and hearing them tell all of these fantastic and wonderful stories about what they've done, the funny things, the silly things, the successes, and even the failures that they have overcome in their lives. And one of the things I've noticed is that, you know, if it's someone who's been in the congregation a long time, people will come up to me afterwards and say, I didn't know that about Tom, Dick, or Harry, or Sally, or Henrietta. We don't know enough about each other's lives. Because, friends, God speaks through our lives. Yes, God speaks to the daffodils and creation and the spinning world and the planets, but God speaks no less out of the creation of who each of us is. 
That's why we do testimonies in our church. We've had a few of those over the years, and I think it's probably time for another testimony. It's time to hear again about somebody's life, what they've done and where they've been, and, and to tell intimately how God is a part of their story, because that's, that's the interesting piece, is that we can't tell our stories, frankly, without acknowledging that God has been in our stories. I could never have imagined that my life would have turned out the way it's turned out. I could never have predicted the crazy and wonderful journey that my life has taken. I remember when I was in seminary and I decided I wanted to do in my internship in Alaska. And my friends, some of whom were like second career students, 40, 50 years old, were like, Louise, you don't know anybody in Alaska. I'm like, no, I don't. But I trust that God's going to be there, and therefore God's going to provide people that I will come to know. You know that line from uh, that hymn I love and strangers now are friends? I mean, that's the beauty of our stories, is that God is providing for us and creating out of us all of the time. This week on Thursday, we uh, had some guests in our, in our, on our fellowship hall, and uh, Reverend Dr. Faith Fowler, who will be with us during the sabbatical for one of our Sundays, she was the keynote speaker. Many of you know that she has been at Cass Community, I think, for almost 25 years now, and that she's developed all kinds of industry to give people jobs, specifically jobs for those who've either come out of prison, who have come out of addiction, or even who are developmentally challenged. You know they make doormats and flip-flops out of all those abandoned piles of tires in Detroit. And you also know that they have a shredding business, and that gives uh, income for those who are developmentally cha challenged. And many of you know the tiny houses, right? What I didn't know about the tiny houses is that part of that the housing that she provides is a solar generator. And that solar generator, you know, makes sure that when the power goes out, that tiny little house of like 250 to 400 square feet, you can't fit all that stuff we got back there in that, whoo, that there, there became another opportunity. So when the lights went out in Puerto Rico, for what, nearly a year, they were without electricity, she got the call, and they took solar generators to Puerto Rico. It isn't enough to have stuff. It isn't enough to sit in our pews and know that God is good. We have to find ways to continue to create new ways to be a blessing of God. Solar generators. You know, we turn on the news and all we hear is bad news. What is that about us that we are so fascinated with bad news? Do we need to know what's happening in the world? Yes, that was a spider. Just thought, thought you'd want to know why I did that. We need to know what's happening in the world, but we need to know all of what's happening in the world. Yes, there are natural disasters and wars and sickness, but there is also all kinds of story of addressing the sickness, medical care, ways in which we are seeking to bring God's creation of goodness everywhere and in every situation. At breakfast on Thursday, we had more than 50 people from many different faiths. There was an imam, we had rabbis, we had pastors, we had Baha'i. All of them seeking to offer God's good news. It's still Easter. We are still Easter people. The point of resurrection is that we have the story to tell that love lives on. 
And all that love that Jesus taught and lived and showed us is supposed to live on in us. And that's what John's gospel beats with a, with a drum. Remember him saying in the gospel of John, you are my disciples if you love each other. Only if you love each other. Jesus was trying to give us some good news. Because God is good all the time. We progressive Christians have some hurdles to overcome when it comes to praising God. We know that if we give God the credit for our blessings, we may be tempted to give God the blame for our challenges. And I wonder if that's what keeps us from saying we are blessed by God. I'm not sure, but we have a hard time saying that. But you know, it wasn't God who made a really bad left-hand turn on Maple on Good Friday. That was me. It isn't God who makes children sick. It really isn't God who destroys infrastructures. So how can we learn to tell each other our celebrations, our praise of God, as easily and maybe more easily than we tell people what's wrong. And I know that I am cheap among, the, among them. I, you know, how are you doing? Well, this is wrong and that's wrong and that's wrong. You know, I want to change that. I want to sound more like that Psalm 145 today, talking about everything is good and how good God is. How many of you have lived in more than one country for any amount of time? Yeah. How many of you have you lived in more than two states in your life? Look at the hands, friends. How many of you have lived in more than five houses? Think about that. How many of you have survived a car accident? I'm glad I'm not alone. How many of you have more than five people you can call at 3 a.m. if you need them? Friends, at that one, every single hand in this room should go up. Why? You are members of this family. Are you hearing me? We all need people we can call at 3 a.m. That's part of the point of being this megaphone of God's love in this world, is that we can call each other when we need each other. You know I don't hesitate to call you, do I? Right, Bob Smith? <laughs> Yeah, we know we can call you up to 11 and not before 10 a.m. We uh, had a wonderful opportunity at this breakfast. This breakfast kind of fell into our laps. This uh, Interfaith Voices for Earth Justice, it's a, it's a group. They lost their venue, and that's how they came to be at our congregation this past Thursday morning. And we said, we have space. Come, have your breakfast at our place. And uh, Ann Honhart and Steve Olson uh, helped put all the details together and set up the room. And it was kind of cool because I had a chance to meet with some colleagues that I don't normally get to see. Like Denise Griebler is a UCC pastor that I know and I really appreciate her. I hardly ever see her. And she's serving in an Episcopal church in Detroit. And her husband is Bill Wiley Kellerman. And he's a United Methodist pastor uh, who will be going before a judge because he was arrested at one of our poor people's campaign uh, opportunities. And actually, our church was actually there the day he was arrested. And the point of getting arrested is to shine a light on the injustice around clean water and available water in our region. So we had a, a good breakfast together, and 
I really appreciated hearing Bill's story. Bill is the kind of guy who, for all of his ministry, has been in the street being arrested. And I feel like what, and, and the, the judge was surprised, that, don't you want this to be dismissed? No, we don't want this case to be dismissed because if this case is dismissed, then it cannot be a megaphone for God's justice in the world. And that's the point. Not to just to get arrested, but to get it into the courtroom so that the story will be told, so that the megaphone will be loud enough for the whole world to hear. We need to get the story told, to get the word out. Clean water is a creation at risk, and it's important for people of all ages. To be the Easter people means to walk out of the tomb and shout that love lives on. To be Easter people means we aren't putting more people into their tombs. So we shout out good news with our lives and with our voices. God is good all the time. All the time. May it be so.